Whether it's a power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Just having a little bit of a walk in park with dog. Played last night, got a few bumps on my head. Put my Yorkshire flat cap on to disguise him. And secondly, because I'm going to meet somebody I think is an outstanding Yorkshireman. Now, I've got to congratulate Johnny Vegas for some of the promos he's done uh, for Super League, particularly in 2017. And they'd be happy that his Super League team, St. Ellen's, got off to a winning start, much to my detriment at the start of the season. But there's an absolute superstar from Yorkshire. It's called the Yorkshire Pros, Ben Taylor. I'm going to go have a catch up with him, talk to him about how he got some of those outstanding points on the social media. I love watching football and cricket and arras. I love athletics, Usain Bolts and Mo Farras. But there's one sport that stands out, at least it does for me, and that particular sport is Super Rugby League. Ben. So excited to meet you, mate. Great it's a real honour. Hi, you too. Brilliant, mate. I was uh, I was in pre-season training camp the last week of pre-season, and uh, I got a text message from my wife. Have you seen this, Jimmy? Have you seen this? Have a look. Uh, and I popped it up in it. I'll be honest with you. The first time I seen you, and uh, it was all about this this Super League promo. An outstanding point. I thought, how talented is this kid, and how good is his Yorkshire accent? And Two thirds of the way through, you mentioned my name, and I was like, <laughs> I was like starstruck and yeah, honoured, yeah. uh, and I just thought it was fantastic. How did you get into it, making videos like that? Uh, well, cheers anyway. I'm glad you liked it for a start. <laughs> but um, I first started doing, you know, a bit of poetry when I would just start walking dog. Right. Um, done a, I've done a poem about uh, my Barbara, my sausage dog, um, and then. I'd, I'd been putting a few together and our lass had been sort of going on at me to share them for a while. Uh, and then my pal who moved over to Australia um, had a young one out there, we an Aussie bird. And obviously he's a Yorkshireman, she's an Aussie. So I sent a poem over to him about, you know, differences between Yorkshire and Australia. Um, and I sort of still wanted his young one to, to grow up with his... Um, you know, knowing his Yorkshire roots. So I sent that across there and, and that one sort of took off. Uh, that had over a million people viewing wow. it and that. Um, that's class. So I thought, <laughs> I'll start sharing a few more. Right? <laughs> um, Put, so that's what I started doing. Really putting Yorkshire on the map and uh, I always brag about the fact that I'm Mr. Yorkshire. Whenever I go on holiday, people often mistake me for being Arabic and Arab, but uh, I'm more Yorkshire than Dickie Bird because I was born on the 1st of August, which you all know is Yorkshire Day, Yorkshire Day, aye. mate. So when I hear people like yourself, I just love the rich heritage that we've got in our vocabulary. <laughs> and just listening to some of the words that you was eating my breakfast this morning, just laughing my head off, mate. Is is that something you have to practice, you know, or remember some of those old Yorkshire words, or just a natural part of your vocabulary? Uh, I think I, I've got quite a broad accent anyway. Broad. Broad, aye. Um, <laughs> I'm from, like, my, my father's from a mining family. Yeah. Um, so that's probably where some of it comes from. Um, some older dialect words, like I've got a couple of points where I, where I talk about old old dialect words, words like besom for broom and cheg for chew, stuff like that. Brilliant. It, words that you don't use no more. Stuff like that I've done a bit of research into, but most of what I do is, uh, yeah, it's just how I talk, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alex was talking earlier about maybe you could put a dictionary together or uh, and a bit of a book of some of your poems that you've been going. I know the real art of it or the real worth is actually listening to you uh, throw it out there and that Yorkshire dialect 
Uh, but have you thought about writing any books or putting it down on paper? Yeah, I've, uh, I've had a few folk, you know, get out of me asking if I've got a book or where they, where they can get my book. And I've said, I ain't got one. So. Yet. Not yet. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So yeah. maybe in future, because I've got hundreds written down that, um, that, yeah, I'd like to share with folks. So if it's something people are interested in, then yeah, it's something I'd definitely look into. Talking about the heritage of Rugby League, um, you're obviously in the Armed Forces and the Armed Forces Rugby League has just gone from strength to strength. You're a big part of that now. Uh, just tell us a bit about um, Rugby League and the Armed Forces and, and what your role is in the Navy and how that comes together in the combined services. Yeah, so um, obviously all, all three services have uh, a, a strong Rugby League team, Army, Army Navy and, and RAF. Uh, I'm captain at, Na at Navy team. Um, and then th this year, I've actually just been selected as to captain the Great Britain Armed Forces team. Outstanding. Uh, Congratulations. So, thank you very much. Hi. So we're going out to um, to Australia, Fort World Cup. We're going June, July. So hopefully, you know, do a number on whoever comes at us like over there. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a, that's a great honour, especially playing under that that Great Britain badge. Um, it's what you grew up under as a kid, isn't it? Certainly is. Looking at stuff like that. I watched interview with Nigel Wood over, over week and uh, I heard him mention about Lions Tours maybe coming back. Yep, yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that'd be quality. And obviously we've got it in forces, so right. it's one of them things, it's it's different to all else. You're not just playing for England, you're playing for, for Great Britain, you know what I mean? And I just think the old military ethos really fits with uh, the culture and the background of rugby league working class people. And it's just great to see Armed Forces days and them heritage rounds sort of coming together and, and playing a big part in the future rugby league as well. Yeah, I think as you've mentioned there, the, the sort of the values that you are instilled in your in forces yeah, yeah. are similar to what you get in rugby league. And like you said, working class folk, um, groups of lads all, all being together, you know what I mean? It's um, it, it's that culture that that's shared between sport and forces, it, and it's it's good for me because I can just be my son, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, mate. I'd use you every week if it were up to me in uh, rugby league to promote the game, particularly at Yorkshire side. I'm sure there's some talented people over in Lancashire, but do you get asked a lot? I mean, I mean I'm just thinking Yorkshire in particular overshadows. Uh, cities like Leeds and took much to our detriment sometimes but you know uh, Gary Verity who's uh, Mr e. Yorkshire CEO of uh, Welcome to Yorkshire you know, brought the Tour de France over here I'm surprised people like that are whipping you up and using you to pro promote some of their stuff are you getting a lot of attention? Uh, yeah I've had a few folk contact me like you know ask, asking for uh, for bits and pieces but all like that yeah it's like, like you said promoting Yorkshire to the world like I don't think there's no better place. Yeah. So just showing it off, if there's all I can do to help that, then I'd like to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, if all like that comes my way, then I'll snap it up. Mate, as a standing up back of my neck, I'm so chuffed and honoured <laughs> to have met him. I honestly are. We watch people on YouTube sometimes, you forget that just normal people, local people, and he's stood here right next I to me. I was saying to Simo before, it's weird having folk coming up to me asking for pictures and that. Like, but apparently they don't recognise you at all. I've got my cap on, I <laughs> take my cap off. It's, Who's like, that? it's like Clark Kent in Clark it with Kent. glasses. Superhero, <laughs> yeah. superhero all day, and that is his disguise right there. <laughs> Mate, great to meet Thanks you. Thank you very much. Cheers, John. Cheers, Pal. Nice one. One game more, he said, lifting his body from the ground, knowing too well he would never stop. This never stops, never ends. One game. Here, where throwing a ball isn't just a pass, it's a journey through 120 years of history. Here, a fixture is more than a game. It's a rivalry forged along ancient borders. Here, a song is more than support. It's the accumulated passion of generations of fans. A stadium is more than a ground. This cauldron is a place of worship, where all are welcome. Where rugby league is more than a sport, where there will be no final whistle, no season end, there will always be more. More to give, to share, to hand down more countries to reach, a legacy to build upon. There will be more fans to entertain, moments that will last forever. 
players to immortalize. Rivalry settled. And legends to embrace. The world's greatest players. Together, here. The 2021 Rugby League World Cup in England will be more than just a game. It will show Rugby League for what it truly is. One game, together. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Welcome back to part two here at Rugby After meeting the Yorkshire Pros in part one, we're meeting another legend right now. We're at the KCOM Stadium for the big game, Hull FC versus Callan. There's no bigger legend than this man, Lee Crooks, right here at Hull. Crooks, how are you, mate? I'm good, Alex, thank you. New season, are you hopeful? Well, without a doubt, yeah. I think that, um, you know, that last year when we, we started the season, you know, we, we looked at the squad and, and everybody thought that there was that air of expectation. Um, you know, if you could feel it within the crowd and everything going on the boxes and that. Uh, this year, you know, it's a different it's a different feeling because because we went to Wembley and we won, and we've got that monkey off his back now. Can we get to the grand final? And it's, and and it's be interesting to see how the team cope with that expectation from the supporters and everybody else, um, which is an added pressure to them. You mentioned recruitment there. Rad has, has recruited really well. I agree. Albert Kelly for me is one of the, the key signings for any club. He, he's, a, he's a great missing ingredient in that standoff position. He certainly is, yeah. And he's, you know, the biggest thing is he carries the ball to the line. You know, he's a good support player. Uh, he's got dynamic speed. And you know, talking to a few of the lads defensively, very, very solid. You know, really strong in the contact. So I think you know he's, he's gonna he's gonna blend well with with Mark Snead, I think, and who's just signed a new two-year deal. Um, so, you know, everything's looking really well for the club at the moment. Mate, it's certainly exciting times. And one thing I wanted to mention, I want you to give me a bit of an insight into the, the mindset of the Hull fans because season tickets are up, memberships up 33%, junior membership up 65%. It's the only club to have such a big growth in Super League. Is, is this club everything to the people of Hull? Well, it, you know, Rugby League is a massive part of, of the community in this in this city, and um, you know everybody said if you get a successful team, then people will come and watch you, and that's exactly what's happened. You know, people came last year, and they've and you know they've they've seen that we've they've created some success, and they've jumped on the back of that. And you know, everybody wants to see a successful whole side. Um, you know, to be fair, everybody wants to see a successful football team and two rugby league teams, but. Unfortunately, Rovers went down last year. City is struggling in the in the Premiership at the moment, and, and Hull come good last year. And I think that people have bought into that. And you know, the Black and Whites are a fantastic group of supporters, and I think that they've been waiting for for success for such a long time. That you know, I think that hopefully this year the players can respond to the to the support that's been given to them, and and try and get and make sure that they get. Uh, give the crowd what they're expecting. Mate, tell me a little bit about uh, off the field as well, because last year people were calling for Lee Radford's head. If they'd have lost that game at Ulkia, the pressure might have been too much. It stuck it out, they won that game by the skin of his teeth, and it just got better and better and better. That's a lot about Adam Pearson. He's stuck with Radders. He's given him a few years to get his, get his group together. And also I wanted to mention James Clark, because this is a lad who started a few years ago, nine grand as a marketing assistant, he's now the CEO. Tell us a bit about Adam Pearson and James Clark as people. Well, to be fair, you know, Radders, you know, 
Radders was appointed when he lacked experience, and the only way he gained experience is by doing the job. And I think that Adams, you know, Adams stuck by him. Adam, Adam got Radders in because he knew that he was the right person for the job, and he stuck by him. And and you know, there's not many chairmen would have done that. So you know, I think that you know Radders has come through and he's and he's been successful and he's repaid Adam for that faith that he had in him. Clarkey, you know, it's 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 a great story. Clark, he's like you said, come through the ranks. He's a great bloke. He does his job exceptionally well. And, um, you know, I think that that's what the club's all about. The club's about progression. It's about giving people opportunities. And, you know, if, even for, me, for myself, you know. Um, You're I, involved all the time, I, I'm, aren't I'm you? Involved, I'm involved at the club because somebody said to Adam about five, four years ago, um, why don't you get Lee working back at the club? And, and he turned and he heard him and he turned around and they made an appointment and everything went from there so do you love it it's fantastic it's great to be back at the club you know everybody knows how much this club means to me and um you know i just i, I love being back here i love being part of uh, the backroom staff in regards to what's happening i love coming and watching the game and, and what happened last year was just an exceptional did you shed a tear i did you know i did and, and because i was so pleased and proud for everybody at the club yeah. that had been worked so hard to, to achieve what they achieved mate it's time to go down and meet james clark it's his 97th consecutive game as match announcer and his last let's hear from the man who's moving upstairs to the ceo position we've just heard from crooks here pre-match it's half time now Hull just sneaking into the lead. And this for me is one of the great stories in rugby league. James Clark starting at Hull, what, 2009, 2008? Yeah, 2009, yeah, 2008. Eight. I covered my first game in 2008 and I worked for the club in 09, yeah. 8,000 pounds. It was my fucking yeah. assistant. Yeah, it was my first salary. Year. Yeah, yeah. It's not much more now, if I'm honest. <laughs> and you've worked your way up the ranks, 97 games consecutively announcing on the pitch. Yeah. Tonight's your final night on the pitch. Yeah, just finished. Yeah. A few tears, a bit of emotion there. I was. I had to go console myself upstairs. And um, to be fair, a couple of the players saw it. So I'm getting a little bit of stick about it now as well. But it's been. I missed out on the 100. I mean, yeah. who would have thought it? But, you know, it was good. Well, it's for a very good reason because you've been named CEO, MD, what's yeah. the title? Executive Director is Executive the post title. Director. Someone somewhere made that up. So, um, yeah, massive opportunity for me and for a club that, as you know, is, is part of yeah. my life, really, yeah, yeah. isn't it? So, um, you know, coming off the pitch is just part and parcel of all of that. I've just been sat up there with Nigel Wood, which was a, yeah. a, a tight front row, but, um, <laughs> and Roger Draper as well from Super League. And I guess that's now my position is to, is to help take the club forward. And we've worked so hard over the last four or five years through some darker times, yeah. put all the legwork in so we can now we can embrace it. And tonight, you know, Thursday night, first home game, Catalan's Dragons, always quiet. We've set a new record for a Catalan's fixture. 13,000. 13,000 in tonight. 13,500, actually. 13,519. 13, 13, and it's freezing. And it's freezing. I've got the old calls up <laughs> Cantona, ooh -ah. And we've got eight and a half thousand members in. We've had a 65% rise in junior members, and you can see I'm obviously here today with the toys and everything. And that's what it's all about. We, we now need to take the club forward, and that's what my energy and focus will be on. And we want to be up there as a Wigan, as a Leeds, as a Warrington, yeah, yeah. and be one of those big clubs. And if the lads can keep firing, there's no reason why we can't do that. Uh, tell me a little bit about the mint, Danny Alton, yeah, because yeah. it's his testimonial year. Tell us a little bit about him as a bloke and a player for this club. Yeah, and to be fair, he came through in my first year. Yeah. So we've actually grown up together. Believe it or not, we're a similar age. I think yeah. we're both <laughs> the two youngest, oldest people you've ever seen. But um, he's, a bit, he's always been a quiet lad. Yeah. Off the field, he's a bit, obviously, as you know, he's a bit livelier. Yeah, yeah. But with everything that happened at Wembley, the season he had last year, he's really earned the right to be in the spotlight. Yeah. And trust me, he's enjoying it, as you've seen. But <laughs> if he can keep performing, I think everybody else for the first time is starting to appreciate what he brings to our team. Team. Yeah. And when he fires, there's no one as good as him, in my opinion. Equally now, we've all got the opportunity off the field to celebrate what he's done for this club. And for me, he's still got five years in him. So yeah. he will finish up there alongside Richard Horn, yeah. Dirk Yeeman, you know, modern day legends of this club. And that tackle, well, you know, he's never, he hasn't bought a beer since. <laughs> to, to, to be fair, he never bought one before, but <laughs> equally, you know. Absolutely outstanding, mate. Well, I wish you the best luck in your new role, Thank mate. You. Mate, how excited are you about playing under Lee Radford? Obviously, Challenge Cup winners last year. Do you think you can go one better win Super League this year? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, you know, I watched them um, last year, you know, um, uh, as a um, spectator, and, um, you know, they, they really had a good season last year, and um, I think um, uh, for me coming in here, I'm, you know, I'm going to, you know, Adam, Ad, you know, that 
you know that sting and attack. Um, yeah. And um, I bring I bring a lot of energy around the ball and um, you know that unpredictability. But um, you know uh, the challenge for me is to um, you know you know back it up every week and um, yeah. I can't back it up this week. Um, you know I forgot. I forgot <laughs> um, you know they. Um, I, you know, I slipped up too high, so you know, um, I forgot to tackle around the legs. So you know, kids don't do, don't don't tackle high. Is it? Don't tackle high, kids. Yeah. Right, you got to speak to the fans now. They're waiting for your big Keith, mate. It's great to have you on the show. Have a great season. We'll see you along the journey. Yeah. Wish you every success, mate. Tom, no man. Cheers, Albert. Thank Cheers. you, mate. Bye. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Danny Outen, Hull FC, Hooker, Mint. James Shawl, Hull FC, number one, Shawley. <laughs> hey, we debate this one all the time. Yeah, so I'm going to say, <sighs> got to be careful here because Benton Bridges. Yeah, you? No, I meant that. Who then? I'm not tight. No, you're not tight, you're just real Ta smart. No, greeny. <laughs> yeah, greeny. Greed. Oh, tag. Too loud. Yeah, Scott Taylor, by Country Mile. Uh, Mr. Centre of Attention, Mimi. Uh. Um, Fash is like strawberry ginger, and he's... Roid Rage, isn't he? So, Fash. <laughs> pound for pound, me. <laughs> Easy. Yeah, you. Pound nah. for pound, me, nah. surely. Pound for pound, surely. Um, lifts the most. Gaz. Gaz again. Gaz. My, my hair's not, is he? Nah, nah Gaz. 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 Got to. <laughs> no, no, no one even comes to close. No. I'm Bowden. Yeah, but he's off bread. He's off bread, isn't he? But he's yeah, still he's eating bread. Chris and Gondon as well. But you work that one out. Tag Sat again. next to me. Nah. Surely, yeah, he's your dad. And you know he is. Nah. Tag. All right then. He's <laughs> 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 got to. Yeah, Sneedy. Sneedy. He's got to have his own way every time. I was going to say wash in. Wash it, you wash it. Out for out, that kid. Out yeah, for wash it. Out. 
tag because he's got loads of fat to eat off. <laughs> <laughs> well, me, uh, Josh Bowden, he's my little man bro. Oh, no, Steve Michaels. Out of them two, I'll chop them in half and then put them together. Tag thinks he is, but. Yeah, Tag thinks he is. Danny Washburn. Washy. Yeah. <laughs> Me. I mean, I mean, to be he, he sips all the time. He's a sipper. You have to be on between. I'm a, I'm a gold you. person. I'm steamboated all the time. <laughs> steamboated. Last yeah. man standing. You know, always actually, if he never goes out, but if he goes out, he's always last man. He goes out once every three years. Mark Minicello. Oh, yeah. He's a bit Massy recently. <laughs> There's um, a new rumour come about. <laughs> Is it Massy? <laughs> we'll leave it as that. I'm joined by a very, very happy man now, Lauren Fresinu. Is that, is that a good pronunciation? It's not bad, it's not, not bad. bad. <laughs> Mate, you've, you've had an interesting time at the Catalan since you took over. Um, how would you look back on your time? Have you really started to shape your squad now? Uh, yeah, you know, as, as, a, as a head coach, you start uh, learning every year, uh, every week, every month. Uh, so now um, I think uh, we, we recruit uh, pretty well. We wanted to, to build a team, um, a very good team culture uh, from the last two years. We very good defensive team, or better team defensively as well. And uh, and I think the two tonight's game and and uh, and uh, against Warrington ten days ago, uh, we start to show in that. What have you learned about yourself uh, as a block uh, since taking on a, a coach? How has it changed you as a person? Oh, I, I learned I learned a lot uh, because. Um, you know, when you are head coach, you are alone. You, even if you got assistant coach, even if you, you know, I've got a, a wife, kids, I've got, and they are always uh, there for me. But when you have to make decision, tough decision, sometimes uh, uh, you you are on your own. So, so yeah, I I, I learned a lot a lot about me and uh, and and my weakness and and my strength as well. Is it fair to say that? What you've embedded in this season is a better culture mm -hmm. on and off the field within your squad. Yes, uh, that's what I, I, I just share with the boys in the dressing room. So we work hard for the last 14 weeks since we started the, the pre-season about our team culture. And, uh, and uh, without a good team culture, you don't win at LFC in, that, in this condition with three, three players injured in the last uh, 40 minutes. So, uh, yeah, we, we work hard on that and, and uh, the, the show that so I'm, I'm really really pleased. We're coming over to Catalan in a few weeks we can't wait for our first journey uh, to the south of France. Tell me a little bit about the Rugby League and how the Catalan journey now to lose is growing Rugby League in the south of France. Yeah oh, the, the, the Catalan you know um, when we start in 2006 um, there is a lot of um, uh, septic people uh, uh, and and you know 12 years after I think we, we can say we are the, the one of the if not the best club in the in the region uh, to to have eight to nine thousand uh, nine thousand fans every every weekend uh, who's shouting and 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 support us uh, so uh, plus uh, you know there's plenty of uh, Perpignan and you'll see that is a nice region with a with good food, with uh, with mountain, with the beach, it's uh, it's a very nice a nice place to live um, and very nice place to enjoy. It's, you just uh, don't want you know to go too far in that <laughs> nice place. Uh, I don't know what you're doing. Are you, you just growing it up, or are you trying to hide the forehead, well, the fivehead? To be honest with you, I don't think I've got long left, so I might as well keep it on top. Otherwise, I'm Austin's got gone. Oh, no, that's what I mean. I look Jones at his is pictures. gone. I look at his pictures and their pictures. I just think soon it'll be some off side, some off back, some off four, please, Barbara. Mate, talk us through the proposal. 
Oh, it was quite romantic. Um, I had a place out in Barcelona, a nice, nice suite, a marina suite, it was called in the Grandeur Estero Hotel. Um, overlooking the harbour, um, I set it up with the hotel. It says, you know, yes. we'll go for dinner at half seven. Could you go to the room and sort it out, put a few rose petals out there and stuff? So when I went back, oh, in fact, I needed to set the candles. They weren't allowed to do candles because it was a fire hazard. Yeah. So I said, oh, babe, just give me five minutes. So I'm just going upstairs for a minute. She went, OK, I went upstairs. Texas said, oh, come up, I've got a surprise for you. Um, I don't know what she expected. I don't think she expected that. She probably no. expected me hanging down with the git mask on upside down. <laughs> but, um, I don't know, she come up and she was she were really shocked. And then when I got down on one knee and I asked her, she was uh, over the moon. What a lucky woman. Mate, she's a lucky woman. It's uh, Your French is coming on. Oui. Yeah. Oui. If, 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 if fluent yet? Yeah. No. 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 Not no. far off? No. No, it, I'm getting there. It's just the tenses that you. you yeah. I, I imagine I speak French like Borat speaks English. <laughs> so when I say I love that. Him, that, that's just what I imagine. Hello. It's, like. it's nice. People just look at me like that and I think, mm, try again, try again. Mate, what's you embracing French life? Can, is this the future for you? Can you see, stay, see, see yourself staying oh, there? I absolutely love it. I mean, yeah. it, it's a bit annoying. It was a bit annoying at first because the French are like, are like us, really. They don't, you know, just they're not friendly. No, no, they're, they are pretty friendly, they're but they friendly. don't just they don't they rush. Are a bit. You know, like when you go to coffee shops and stuff, and there's a bit of a queue. Yeah, and, you know, you just, everyone's like rushing. <laughs> not there, mate. It's just just take, take the time, and everyone yeah. just sits there like patiently. Um, but once you get past that, and like. Yeah. When you go to the bank, if you lose your card, yeah. it takes like three weeks to come and, and you have to go collect it from the store. <laughs> you can't change your PIN number. It, it's a bit weird and you can still pay with checks for food and that. It's, yeah. it's a bit weird, but once you get past that, it's good. You know, I think they've got the right attitude. They're all, they're all family oriented and um, you know, they, they take pride in the, in the meals and stuff like that. Mate, I'm coming over in a couple of weeks, spending a few days. I can't wait, I'm, I'm, mate, I'm excited to come over. Bit of golf. So you got some good, good places to take us. Yeah, I'll take you all over, mate. I'll take you up Carcassonne, I'll take you down to Collier. Have you ever been in Collier? No. Nope. Oh, beautiful, mate. Absolutely Never been. Beautiful, mate. I love it. It's right mate. there, I've been Man of culture, Jody Broughton. I've changed. And how's life on the pitch? Because I think it's fair to say, I spoke, said it to Lauren and he agreed, you've got a bit of culture. For a few mad loose heads gone. And it's settled down a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we, we had a lot of talent last year, a lot yeah. of international talent. Um, you know, people going about on and off the field uh, uh, antics, but it happens at all clubs. Yeah, of course it does. Yeah. It's just that, you know, in summer where we live, it's a bit like a beef or so. Yeah. It's, it's just a bit different in it, so everything gets blown out of proportion. But, you know, like Lawrence said, and like you just said, then um, our culture of the team is really good, you know. Performances, last two performances have been real scrappy, but we've just ground it out and worked yeah. really hard for each other and come away with two points for that. Mate, you're beating two top teams, yeah. Warrington and Hull. You've really laid a platform and a marker for yourself. Two Are you confident this year? Well, yeah, the two teams we didn't beat at all last year, I don't think. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got just a culture, like I say. We're just really willing to work hard for each other. We know we're going to be competitive in all the games. And, you know, if we can do the little things right and, you know, add on and keep building it week on week, I don't see why we can't be contending for the title. I mean, I've been looking at uh, a lot of predictions and stuff, and a lot of people have wrote us off and said yeah. we've not got a top eight team, but we've tell you what, we've got a top two work ethic. Yeah. Mate, I love that. Jordy, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Always a pleasure, mate. Yep. Always a pleasure. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Let's go to work, yo! Let's go to work, let's go! Post-match, Hull have been beaten tonight. We're outside, it's UK Red, Fire and Security Fan Camp. What's your name, pal? It's Carl. Carl, tell us about tonight. What do you make of it? Uh, well, what can you say? We had a what I thought was a decent performance. Um, yeah, we made our mistakes, but at the end of the day, the calls that were made, we just got absolutely hammered the full session. Um, there was a lot of Catalan that got away with murder half the time, and yeah, when it came round to it, not a single mistake was given. It was, yeah, just... Are you blaming the referee? Are you blaming the referee? I am, he was, he was bad. Did you not see the calls every single time? It was like any time we got something, he was like, nah, not having it. So, no, not impressed. What's your name? Megan. What's your name? Elsie. Elsie and Megan. And tell us, what do you thought of tonight's performance? It was interesting, but a bit boring. Interesting, maybe right. That's so honest. And what did you make of it, Elsie? Just the same. <laughs> cold. Cold. How cold is it? Very. Is it always this cold in Hull? Uh, I don't know. It's not in the summer. You've got, a, you've got a hat on there. Is that the alley bird? Yes. 
What's your name, mate? Dan. What's your name? Danielle. Dan and Danielle! Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. How good is that? That's awesome. Please tell me you're married. No. no. Not yet. Not yet. Maybe one day. Maybe one ten years? And you have proposed? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. So of course. How did you do it? Do you want that ring? Do you want that yeah? That's it. And you took that. <laughs> how you doing, Gina? All right, mate. What's your name, pal? Elliot. Elliot, and what's your name, mate? John. Elliot and John. Hull fans? Hull fans, yeah. Disappointed Hull fans there. Disappointed? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I think, you know, we, it could have gone either way, couldn't it, tonight? But I think, you know, FC were slightly off, weren't they? Yeah. What do you make of Elliot? Um, I thought it was just a bit, you know, out-muscled. You know, out-dominated a bit, you know. It wasn't the greatest evening for this man, Lee Radford. I didn't catch him on Thursday because he was sulking. Saturday morning, Rads, how are you feeling now, mate? Still sulking. <laughs> no, um, no, obviously disappointed with, with the way the game went and, you know, the way we played ball in hand, but um, I defensively thought, you know, pretty much what I thought after the game, my, my initial uh, feeling was we defended really well, but obviously plenty of improvement with the ball. Mate, you're a man of many talents, you're tough as teak, you like a fight in the boxing ring, later on you'll be fighting um, in Martin Gleeson's testimony, Ryan Halls, getting back in the ring in October, I think it is. Uh, you've also got your own golf club, we're, we're stood at Sutton Golf Club in Hull, it's west side of, far side of Hull, kept driving and driving and driving, <laughs> but we got here, and you invited me for a game of golf, and I thought, yes, love a round of golf, but it's a golf game with a bit of a difference, isn't it? It is, yeah. Obviously, um, Danny Alton's been granted a testimonial this year, so um, you know we're going to have a game of rugby golf. Um, rugby to, golf. Rugby golf, yeah. So to, to fill his pockets up as best as we can. <laughs> um, but no, it's um, you know something we saw. I actually saw. I got sent to me as, as an advert, and I thought there's some mileage in that. And I reckon um, you know it'll be a great day. Obviously, you know the kids had a fantastic career, and, and hopefully we'll get plenty turned out for it. Mate, tell us a little bit about him. as a bloke. Uh, the mint. Where does the mint come from? That's a good question. You laugh. I'm gonna. Danny's gonna reveal reveal that. I think in in one of his um, in one of his dinners. That is testimonial. So we'll we'll keep that under our wraps. But no, he's um, he's obviously a big part of you know what we do. He's um, he's still not repaid me for all the lifts I used to give him to training. Um, I'm still waiting for that. And hopefully, if we can raise enough funds for his testimonial, I, I might see some of that again. <laughs> I don't think you will, mate. You got. Surely here as well. You had a great year last year. What are you hoping for for 2017? Uh, the fans have moved on. They want Jake Connor back there. <laughs> 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 they, um, <laughs> no, obviously, it's, um, you know, the last two games probably conditions haven't suited yeah, the way yeah. he plays his game of footy. So, um, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll get a bit of a dry track on Thursday against Huddersfield and see how, see how that goes. Mate, let's explain rugby golf to me really quickly. Um, yeah, look, you kick off from a tee, as, yeah. as, you, as you would tee off in a normal golf game. You then go from, from the foot, so a punt, and then, um, you know, the holes, obviously, on the, on the green you pass into, or if, you, if you're talented enough, you can kick it into, and, and it's very much like golf uh, as a game. You score it as that. Um, but I think, yeah, I think it'll be, a, you know, it'll be an enjoyable day, and hopefully we'll get plenty turned out. Well, let's, uh, let's talk to the boys, and let's go for a little round of rugby golf. Walking to the, uh, you've just kick, kicked off for your rugby golf, Dan. Uh, it must have been a lot this year. You've been granted a testimonial. Ten years at a great club like Hull. Yeah, mate, it's, it's special. It's you know, it's something that 
you know, you always wanted to do when you was a kid is play, play for all FC and to, to save 10 years, it's, it's something like that. Yeah, I'm real chuffed for. Mate, there's going to be loads <laughs> of events over here. Let's just look back on Thursday night. It's like, are, are you a bad loser? Do you struggle sleeping after a game? Or how, um, how is, are you one of them who just goes home and just goes for every tackle? Sometimes, obviously, you know, I, I watch the game back if it's on sky, like you say, but yeah. you know, I don't like to show on it too much. It's, you know, what's done's done, but it's something that we definitely need to learn from, you know, moving on. But, no, I went home, had my mini eggs and my Twix, <laughs> had a cup of tea and went to bed. <laughs> it was all right. Is that a ritual, mini eggs and Twix? No, it was just what was left from the kids. <laughs> <clears throat> Mate, you're the reigning man of steel. Has that changed you as a person or a player, that accolade? No, no definitely not. It's, you know, I just go about my business as I usually would. It, you know, I'm just, just a bit of a jokey kid, you know, go about training as I always will do. I, I won't change for that now. And the team this year, you lost a couple of massive characters in Leon Price and Frank Pritchard. Um, I, I, I sent a few messages to Frank when I was over and I was hoping to get, get together with him, but we didn't quite make it. Uh, what have you lost and what have you gained this year? Yeah, obviously losing in, in Frank and Leon, the, the massive characters around the place. Leon, yeah. you know what Leon's like, he's, <laughs> he's centre of attention and he is, he's always joking about and, and making the place bouncing. And, and same with Frank, he brought that real family atmosphere around the place. And, no, it's something that you know we will miss, but it's something that we, we've recruited in as well. I think you know all the boys that have come in have, have really stepped up, and you no, know, it is a real family club, and it, you know, it's something that's really good for us. Yeah. Mate, rugby golf, um, it's a great idea. Rad is obviously the millionaire of Hull. He's got yeah. all, fingers in so many pies. <laughs> He's allowing you to have this game down on on your golf course. If uh, people want to get in touch and want to come and play any businesses or any people, how can they get in touch? I just obviously we'll go over to, to the hall. There's, there's, there's some signs up there, but you know, there's an email address and a, and a contact number, and it'll be it'd be great to, for you to be uh, part of the of the show and the testimonial. Mate, absolutely outstanding. Let's see how we get on with you. Number kick number two. Let's go straight see on the middle. Straight on the middle. Let's see how Jamie Shaw gets on. <laughs> straight in the pond. <laughs> <laughs> there were some massive results last night, Shawley in Super League. Um, what do you make of the, of the, of the quality? Everyone's it's no easy game, is there? No, nah, they're in. I was thinking that last night. Um, I watched the all the charges this morning on the um, Sky Sports website, and there's some good charges as well. But um, like you said, there's no easy games, and we know every week we've got to be on our game and on the ball. Yeah, we won't dwell on Thursday night. It, it were a tough loss to Catalan. Looking forward to next week, another Thursday game. How do you find playing on Thursdays compared to a Friday night? Uh, not much different. You know, it's still a game day, and it's still something I look forward to. And it's a bit of a strange one, though, obviously not being on Sky and still being a Thursday game, so that's a bit strange, but either way, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, you're an expert at rugby league, but how have you gotten on at rugby <laughs> golf so far? Well, I wouldn't say expert at rugby league, but I'm definitely struggling <laughs> at this. You've got, um, you got a tee off the kit, uh, off the corner, and I'm struggling to get it off the ground a bit. <laughs> Mate, this is an awkward shot where we are now, because you could pass it or you could kick it. What would you go for? Oh, I don't think I'd be able to hit it with a pass, so I'm going to go for the kick. You're going to go for a kick? Yeah. Mate, tell us a little bit about Danny Alton, the main man. It's his testimonial year. What kind of influence has he been on your career? Yeah, he's been massive, and um, I'm luckily, lucky enough to share the field with him every week. And He's one of them players that he puts 100% in every week, and you know what you're going to get with a kid. And For a guard to put, well, I think he made 67 tackles. Uh, on Thursday against Cattle and sometimes that goes a bit bit under the radar yeah. and to the average fan but we res every player respects him a lot and I think he knows that. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. 